Hi everybody, welcome to Mobility Monday. My name is Bart Hawkinson, physical therapist at Therapeutic Associates, North Lake Physical Therapy. Today we're gonna to talk about the posterior chain and posterior chain stretches. So first off is we'll talk about what is the posterior chain and why does it matter? So the posterior chain is effectively all the muscles from the back of the leg up into the lower back. So if you kind of trace it down, so we've got our, some of our lower back muscles, gluteal muscles, and there's a few muscle groups in that region. So there's the gluteus, and then below that, there's some deeper muscles that are important too, uh, tracing down to the hamstrings and to the calf muscle. So why do we care about the posterior chain? Two reasons. Reason number one is it works in conjunction with the muscles to the front of the body and helps balance things out. Um, we can certainly talk a lot more detail about that, but you know, the short take home is it's important to maintain good balance between the muscles in the back and the muscles in the front in terms of both flexibility and strength. Uh, the really important thing, or you know, one of the, the kind of key pieces of the posterior chain is it tends to get neglected. Uh, unfortunately, the way we live our lives, you know, we're in cars a lot, we're sitting a lot, we're sitting on those muscles, we tend to not use them. They tend to weaken up and they tend to tighten up. And it's just a function of, you know, the postures, the positions that we're in in our society. We're not up walking around as much, creating that balance. So we tend to get these imbalances. Posterior chain is one of those muscles that kind of takes the burden of it all. So we're going to focus on, again, mobility of the posterior chain today. Uh, strength is an important piece. That'll be for a later day. Uh, but we're going to get into some of my favorite exercises. All right, so when we're stretching the posterior chain muscles, I like to start from the top down. So starting with the lower back muscles, working my way down the chain. Um, so we're going to start with one that's kind of easy, easing into it, especially if you haven't been spending a lot of attention to these muscles. So I'm going to be on my back here. starting with both knees comfortably bent, and I'm just gonna do a simple knee to chest pull. So grabbing a hold of the knee here, pulling up towards my shoulder here, and I should feel this into my hamstrings, into my gluteals, and into my lower back. I like to hold all these stretches for 15 seconds, and we'll do a couple repetitions on each side. So just a couple more seconds on the left here, and then I'll switch it over to the right. And as I'm pulling up, one point with this is I'm not going to pull directly towards my chest. I'm going to go at a slight outward angle, which matches up with the natural anatomy of the hip. So I'm going to pull out towards the outside of my shoulder at a slight outward angle there. Once I feel that stretch, I'll hold 15 seconds, and ease out of that, move on. Next stretch here is I'm going to move into a prayer stretch position. So knees are just a little bit more than hip width apart. My hands are directly under my shoulders. I'm gonna main, maintain a little bit of a rounded position through my lower back, and I'm gonna lean back while walking my hands forward. I'm gonna go as low as is comfortable, and my focus here is really, uh, for the sake of this, trying to sit between my heels, or as, to get as close to that point as possible. I should feel a nice stretch into my lower back, possibly into the gluteals. Again, holding for 15 seconds, breathing nice and easy and then coming up out of that stretch. All right, another really great stretch that engages almost the entire posterior chain is a downward dog. So great stretch, not everybody can do it, and a lot of us have the flexibility uh, or, or lack of flexibility that makes it kind of challenging. So downward dog, I'll get into, hands are directly underneath my shoulders. I'm onto my toes, I'm gonna come up, I'm going to keep my back straight, trying to push my heels down, trying to lock my knees out. Now you can see that I don't quite have the flexibility to get my heels all the way down or to get my knees straight while maintaining a good flat back position. So here I can bend my knees a little bit and get my heels a little bit lower, or I can walk further out and I can get my knees straight. My best position is somewhere in the middle. Now, for those of us that find that position to be a little bit intense, I'm going to show you an alternative. So the alternative to the downward dog is what we call a half dog position. So I'm going to use the table here, hands on the table, I'm going to get my feet back, kind of find that good position. You'll, you'll fill it out as you go. Back is straight, and I'm going to drop my chest and lean back, 
and pushing my heels down, trying to straighten my knees out. So from here, it's going to feel similar to the downward dog, but just a little bit less intense, and it's a good starting position. Some key uh, comp components to this, making sure that the head and neck stays in neutral. I'm not looking up. I'm not letting my head dangle, but keeping my spine nice and straight, trying to extend through my arms, trying to extend through my knees. You can see fairly tight my hamstrings, so I'm not getting full extension, but working towards that, maintaining good neutral position through the back, and then coming up out of that. All right, moving down from the lower back, we'll move into the gluteals, and we're going to stretch a muscle called the piriformis, which is deep to the buttocks there. So for here, for this, I'm on my back. I'm going to stretch my right side, so I'm going to cross my right foot up over my left knee, and I'm going to reach, and I'm going to grab a hold of my left knee, and I'm gently pulling my knee towards my body. So from there, I'm getting a strong stretch down in through this region. Again, just like everything else, we'll want to hold for at least 15 seconds, making sure we're breathing easily into the stretch. And then after our 15 seconds, we'll relax and we'll switch over to the other side. From this position, I can move right into stretching my hamstrings. And there's lots of good hamstring stretches. One that's real simple is just simply grab a hold of the leg there, trying to straighten it out. Now you notice leg is on the ground here. I'm not quite able to get full extension through my knee. If I bend this leg up, it actually slackens off the system a little bit, and I'm able to get full extension there. So this is a good starting position for people that don't have a ton of hamstring flexibility. Doesn't require any equipment, pretty easy to do anywhere. There's lots of good ones. This is just one that I like because it's simple to do. Again, after 15 seconds, we'll ease off of that, switch over to the other side, stretch that out for people that have a little bit more flexibility, or maybe people that have you know, done this for a while and are looking to progress, just by straightening that leg out, puts more load through the system, creates a bigger, more powerful stretch. All right, and then the final part of the posterior chain, or at least I consider it to be part of the posterior chain, are the calf muscles. So some simple stretches for the calf, I'm going to use something stable here, so a wall or a countertop works. I'm going to put my feet parallel to each other, one in front of the other. The front foot can, uh, knee can bend a little bit. Back leg is going to be straight. I'm going to push down into my heel and lean forward. I should feel a stretch in the back of my right calf. I'll hold that one again a good 15 seconds. Then after 15 seconds, I'll ease out. Now what I'm going to do to stretch another part of my calf, I'm going to move that foot forward just a little bit. Heel stays down. Notice my toes point straight forward. I'm not letting my toes you know, go out to the side like that. I'm going to let this knee bend a little bit. I'm going to sink down into the stretch. You should feel it a little lower down, a little bit lower towards the calf there, or towards the heel there. All right. Again, each of those stretches holding for at least 15 seconds, doing two to four times on each side. All right, today we talked about some stretches for the posterior chain, and we talked a little bit about what is the posterior chain and why it's important. Uh, again, there's some good stuff to talk about the strengthening of the posterior chain, which we'll hit on uh, at a different time. Uh, but for now, these are just some simple things to go after mobility. So these are ones that are things that I like to do. They're easy. They don't take a lot of equipment. You might notice as you're working through these that with some of these you're pretty limited, and with others you really don't feel much limitation at all totally okay to pick and choose the ones that you feel are more important. You know, with everything, they're, they're tools in a toolbox. So use the stuff that works best for you. With all stretching, you want to be nice and easy. You never want to push into pain. You don't want to uh, go ballistic or, or bounce into your stretches, but just a nice, easy on and off. And I do think it's always a little better to stretch when the body is a little bit warm, you know, if you've walked a little bit or at least have been up and around versus, you know, you're really cold, you've been sitting or um, you know, first thing in the morning, you might want to move, get a little blood flow going before you dive into the stretches. All right. Hope you guys enjoy those stretches and keep moving.